I don't think anyone does. I mean, it's something that's kind of a bit of a gray area. Well, it's a law that regulates the copying and performance of, uh, of artistic and cultural and intellectual works in Canada. It's an interesting law because it was written as a law to affect businesses. And while the law stayed the same, the technology changed so that um, it affects everyday activities now, things that you do in your own home, that you wouldn't think about hiring a lawyer to decide whether they're legal or not. A copyright protects certain aspects of it, namely literary, musical, artistic and dramatic works. So examples of that might be um, a, a book would be protected by a literary copyright. Um, a photograph would be protected as well. And it protects original creations, so you can't simply take a, a, a book that someone else has written and try to get your own copyright on it. I think things changed quite a bit when, you know, Napster came, came on board and that, that was really the turning point. But I think also another big turning point um, with computers was that when um, they first started to introduce uh, burners into, into computers, that's when you know, the, the red flag should have gone up. If everything was available free with, with no compensation to the creators, that there, there would be no incentive to create and, and that certainly would not be good for the economy. So it's important that we recognize the, the rights and the energy and the effort that goes into creation and compensate it adequately, while at the same time providing for access. If, if there's no audience able to access it because they can't afford to, then I don't think there's any point in creating. We can't create something that's so expensive that no one can, can look at it. Once you get something for free, for free you don't want to go back and, and pay for it. And that's, I think, half the problem that's, that's come in the last 20 years or, or, or the last 10 years. We need to decide whether we want to live in a, a, a society where we have a participatory culture, where everyone, where culture belongs to all of us, or whether we're going to live in a pay-per-view world where you know, all our entertainment and our culture is handed down from the media companies and we pay every time we want to listen to it or watch it or whatever it may be. People still like coming in and talking, you know, and having some um, kind of conversation. I mean, I think one of the successes about the store is that people can come in, talk about music. We'll lose out on these opportunities. Culture is a, always has been a participatory, participatory thing, with people um, singing songs at home or um, you know, changing words, making them their own. But a lot of people actually want to participate in culture. There seems to be this craving. They're blogging, they're producing photos on Flickr, they're putting vid videos on YouTube, making mashups. People are creative and they want to create. Culture builds on the stuff that's around you all the time. Oh, we're No Fun City, and uh, we're a fairly new band from the Vancouver region, greater Vancouver area. Last few years, at least, of downloading music and them not being able to get a hold of, um, get all music under control, has given us a lot of exposure. I think it's important that we acknowledge the creativity of, of individuals and, and creators generally. So it has to ensure that it grants rights to those that create. government can put things in place that will um, prop up the recording industry for example that, that help them through the next five years maybe ten years you know but this change is going to happen sooner or later my personal feeling is that it would be better to force the creators and the industries to adapt now um, and therefore be one of the first countries to be in this new um, environment where you know, copying is not regarded as something that people pay for, perhaps, you know. In the mass media uh, era of the 20th century, we've actually had uh, a social reorientation, a reorientation of society where a lot of the communication is, is broadcast communication. And we've actually seen, have research that has shown that there has been a breakdown of social connections and relationships between people, um, particularly in the latter half of the 20th century, and there's pretty strong evidence connecting that specifically to television.
and live with other people in communities, things like sports and making music. It used to be that, that a very high proportion of people in society could sing or play an instrument. This was a standard skill, at least in the middle class, and, and working people as well. In Creative Commons specifically, there is actually a, a, an organization that's uh, been set up in the United States to uh, provide, their explicit goal is to provide alternative ways for artists to re uh, release their work in ways that allow people to share them. The first thing is that a law that everybody breaks is a waste of time, basically. It shouldn't, shouldn't be a law at all. In the end, if we want people to refrain from copying, that's going to be, have to be something that's supported by the social values of the people in the society. If people support the law, they'll follow it. Not every one of them, but most of them. I mean, the, the quantity is better than quality. I think people are looking for quality in life, not quantity. I love it. I love when people download our music because it means they like us. <laughs> but, you know, it makes you feel really good. If our goal is to try to produce a law that people support and believe in and that, it, that helps everybody, the artists and the consumers, then I think we can do that. Thank you.